We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Hello and welcome to Paris Stood Up Presents. Paris Stood Up is a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting the written word, spoken word, and all sorts of performing arts. Generally, the wide array of things that makes the human race mildly fascinating. Creative work can be lonely work, but we believe it doesn't have to be, which is why Paris Lit Up hosts an open mic every week in a bar in Paris, which is now closed. Begging us to ask the question, what's an open mic in a confined world? Is it the space we shared? I hope not. Is it time? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's half past, don't wake the neighbors. But you might be watching this at noon, eating cereals because you just woke up. I don't know. But you're here, and I'm talking to a camera, so there must be something happening. And it's you. You who sent your work, a whimsical piece of time condensed so well that it now occupies a space in the universe. It's you and the ripple that it will create in someone else's course, just to nudge them off their orbit only for a second. It's you who came only in the hope that your axis would be moved. Pluto, if you're listening, I know you're not a real planet, but I'd love to hear some of your poetry. You were always, always more of a dog to me anyway. Do we promote comedy? I don't know. Tonight's featured performer is Alison G. Kohler, an amazing writer and performer. Look forward to it and I'll see you at the beginning of the second round. The six-year-old's perfect bones are about to pronounce. The entourage dons white gloves for reading. One leans on the Alfred jewel set at the head of a staff. The scops fertilize the bands, grip their cane handles. All see the boats coming, over land, each hull carried by fifteen plus. No, we didn't even try to make masks of the nameless, the handsome, the heartless who'd lied. And so it should have been no surprise that before all too soon, all the baggage we carried cast shadows at noon and midnight. Moon apologies wane. We meant words at a time, and we paid this with sorries, weighed by the length of too soon and too short a goodbye. We never knew how to say, this piece of my story, it sticks and it stays, and I'm not saying it's blameless, but it's part of the way that I read. No, we didn't even try to make names of the heartless, the handsome but artless, those pieces of us which were broken, stitched hurriedly with well-meaning lies. We never knew to say, I've baggage, it stays, in sorries and in age. And we bundled our troubles of noon-riddled rage onto trains that had promised some part of the way. But when the lines track in parallel, choices are made, and while lines may run lateral, material stays. Our baggage, our stories, our onboard delays. In the light of the journey, we still fail to say. This piece of my story, it's stuck and it stays. And we're not saying moon sorries, it's part of the way we read the day.
Forget the round-the-table laughter, the clinking of glasses. Forget the hello and goodbye kisses at the front door. Forget the long-lost hug from the friend at the station. Forget the summer tango lessons down by the banks of the Seine. Forget the brush of hands on the first date. Forget the linking of arms, the old lang syne. Forget the elbow crush, the beer wine haze under the beams of the pub. Forget the touching of knees, the warming of hands close by the fire. Forget the audience in the dark, whose lighters, one by one, became stars in a galaxy of praise. Forget the roar of the stadium, the little boy on his father's shoulders, the goal, the moment they will never forget. Remember. Remember your mask, your gloves, your disinfectant spray. Remember your piece of paper that allows you out today. Remember your neighbours, the blind lady in the dark, the old man marooned in his room. Remember to clap nightly for those who keep us alive. Remember those who are not alive. Remember, forget, forget, remember. Remember that this too will one day be a memory worth forgetting. Remember, never forget that all things must pass. Uh, it's a poem about quiet heroism uh, and unpaid carers. And the reference to Travis is not to Travis Bickle, but to Travis in Paris, Texas. Um, who turns up out the blue and his brother has been raising his child pretty much single-handedly for several years and just goes through it goes through the film just looking out for his charismatic dramatic flawed um brother but actually if you look at his performance and you look at what he does you know there's a lot to be said for living life his way it's called supporting actor it's got a reference from the fall um strife knot it takes grace to play the second fiddle well my friend tells me it's the second guy, not Travis, but the married brother at ease in his own image. The character actor who only gets his name above a picture at 76 alongside an Oscar nomination. The one who carries the family, whose back of the hand bustles open the drape to turn the winch of the clothes error rather than slap a woman's cheek. Runs water, or while appreciating the curls that hang low on the dusky brunette, collects the child by the white picket fence only to jog across a sunset it took all day to establish, hold court in an American bar, and order well. He might attempt to engage the chanteurs before giving it up and suggesting a chaser. A snapshot in his wallet of his wife and babies, each time knowing the cost on the battery. This guy, the guy who has something to tell me. Imagine. Over and above reason that carousels a copter and we're leaving. Take heart, my dear, the cards are all dealt down there. Read the signs, the seasons rhymes, and living time, remember. <laughs> Presenting all those PowerPoints and reasons That's when I heard you whisper We'll sneak between the factories Kettle's boiled but the fire's gone out So oil up the round about and dry your tears Same love. 
places begin with a fall. Heading down to the surface, encountering some atmospheres. It is the afternoon of the fourth day of lockdown. Everyone is being told to stay inside. We are allowed to go out for exercise and groceries, but must carry a form stating our intention. I am grateful to be allowed outside for sunshine and air I am grateful to be able to walk and run. I wear a latex glove when I punch in the codes to re-enter the building. I'm writing down facts. Yesterday was my mother's birthday. I wanted to write yesterday, the day of her birthday that I have celebrated in memoriam for 22 years. These are going to be the hard things to s These are going to be the hard things to write because I'm afraid of my audience when I confess what tickles my desire. I imagine who I least want to know and then try to divert my mind back into a subject that is safe. My mother is safe. I am not afraid to tell anyone about what it was like to lose her as an adolescent. I am not afraid to tell, but perhaps I am incapable. I suppose I'm afraid of that. What can I possibly say? Yesterday I found old photos of her as a young woman, as a mother with me. I brought them into the room I have set up as a studio. I brought glass and paints and tools into it so that I can continue to make art. I made some glass pieces yesterday thinking of her 
am I pushing myself into new territory? I was in a space of more beauty and acceptance and love yesterday. Today I ran. Today I wrote to my students. Yesterday I baked a cake with marbleized lime icing, poppy colored and cream white. It looked like a melted candle. Who is she? Who is she now? And so, sitting or being in this different space, a chosen in between, temporarily forever, nothing around while things pile up on shelves. The sun illuminates the window streaks. I guess I am wondering relentlessly if this will be my forever future, and if I do not wish it to be, how can I take steps towards shaping another? Do I need to plan and attempt to mold it, or will it simply change as time continues and I continue? I distrust certainty so may never choose anything. I move towards what compels until I am told to stop or feel unwelcome, crushed by the it or the me, crack apart the presumed, the artist who she will bake a raspberry cake, touch, obligation, the bending of a mind to accommodate the wishes and feelings and chaos of any other. Do we only say yes when we know we want? Out of practice in most things, it has been hard. Friends feed themselves with hours and hours of cinema history. Every day there is a garden on my torso. I see my breath reflected in the folds of fabric. Last night a ship was hoisted over a mountain. It floated into the rapids and survived each impossibility. handfuls of bills that looked so arbitrary. Do we ever understand? Can we articulate? Do we let artifice carry us to sincerity, to dreams? What is the fabric we need? There is never a need. There is only need, brain drawn and tiresome. Everyone's needs and burdens are endless in how do we gauge what is real, dire. This is clearly a spot of decadence. To not know what is real Anniversaries, all moments remembered. All futures we reach out for from a page whose lines have become diagonally bound.
and we're back. The space-time continuum is still on hold. Comets are stopped dead in their tracks. Pluto is still not a real dog. But God knows he'd be happy to have you here. I know I am. For those of you who were not hit before, Paris Lit Up is a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting the written word as well as the spoken one. It all, uh, it's also an association that produces a magazine every year featuring amazing artists from all over the world. If you'd like to be one of these artists or support our action, maybe you should check out the website. Link should be in the description. For those of you who came here only for the poetry and not for me talking next to a fire, you're in luck. Here comes the next round. When you grow up in the desert, all you can do is dream. All you can do is scrape together the last of the weed, rolling your wishes into a skinny joint that's never tight enough, that never catches on that crucial first twist. You smoke your dreams not knowing what else to do with them. Life is hot and heavy, and you watch the ceiling fan twisting the smoke, cutting its path to nowhere. Alessandra Roselli is dating a drug dealer, your best friend Christine told you. Alessandra's the sexiest girl at school. Of course she'd be dating a drug dealer. You take a hit, then another. Your drug dealer would live in LA out near the water, not selling to boardwalk weirdos or average donors, but to rich artists. Actresses who lived in places more remote than Hollywood, who lived in bungalows and hidden hills with gates that slide open letting you into their world. You take a hit and lie back. There's nothing to do but watch the fan blades slice through the smoke. There's nothing to do but watch time go by, waiting to be finally free on the road that led away from here. On the freeway to LA, windows down and music up, joint lit. The day not ending but unfolding as you arrived in your future, in the life you were meant to live. Cheap wine and dangling my feet in the swimming pool, urination and tilting the glass for another pull, a clean pair of heels reading, don't worry, I'll call. The white lakes are clear, and this, the sea of seven colours, the orbital range of the charioteer. Since when did two heads sit on one neck, finger and thumb break a salter's back? Take this, the eye with an eye in the back of the head, the knuckles pink hinge at the incubator's lid, the glass sides of what I did. Thank you. 
It's the poem about rules, um, and it's based on three lines from the Iranian film Vajra, written and directed by Haifa Al Mansour. Maxims. A woman's voice is her nakedness. It's true. In the computer room past 12, your sigh, your yawn. It's like we curl up together, complicit and intent, then exit separately through turnstiles. Respectable girls go out of the sight of men. And it's true, the fascination of the separate. Rastafarians keeping a three-day fire. Women in their incarnadine tent. Cats that keep to the harbour side. One ear, one eye. A tattered cast fetched upon a pebble shore. Pythagoras' triangle is a theorem of God. And it's true you cannot race me on my own vehicle. You just a mixture of forests and swamps and red rivers, populated by enormous beasts which eat each other. Could have no better lover than the neighbour's son, drawn by your headstrong challenge to every rule. Paris was no more since cities lost their freedom. Stop promulgation, halt publication from the false state, end the measures, stall the order, bar division, curb the civil fighting, bulk the st stilted tensions, cease your arguments and stay your frenzied bloodthirst. Why do I have to write about my times as if it was history? Why does the ink flowing from my pen refuse to proceed while the paper it blackens screams like an infant abandoned by God? Violence, violence in the church is nowhere sacred. Wailing, howling, yelling, screeching, no one silent. Gendarmes, handcuffs, matraque, nothing left unsullied. And today is the beginning, or a day or two past the beginning of month two under quarantine. What is there to say? Mornings are difficult. Nighttime is difficult. I 
exercise seems to help my mind emerge out of the oppressive clouds. Work, I think, helps too, but I struggle to force myself into it. I think what feels most sad, especially at night, is that I don't think the end of quarantine will matter. I'm not awaiting normalcy. There is an always painful why. It is hard to see anything other than the eventuality of semi-compromised solitude. It's not even that I'm yearning for a family, it's more the numbness of a door now closed. I guess month two requires, is naturally asking for or creating a transition back to business, total despair, thinking into the future, forgiving my inadequacies, thy flesh to sandpaper backs of hands and sneeze. Amazing to not be ill. The people care. I will respond. I can play with shards to string around the book. Don't let go. Sit in the sun naked and alone. Salute it with ancient exercise. Walk and bake and do not slip into any death, it will come, welcome or unwelcome, everything is never possible, or who knows, try to choose a thing or allow a thing, keep the mind awake, let it sleep, who am I waiting to or for? Do I imagine it will be seen? The pen makes a concave depression on the middle finger of my right hand. My nose is ready to run. I will continue to write until I reach the bottom of this page. I wonder how many words this will be. What is the erotic charge that makes me so wet I am unable to make myself come? A water slide, orgasmic without orgasm. It is at once totally physically safe, but a risk for the mind. A deepening of, a resexualizing of, still on the brink, a brink just past yesterday's midnight, too wet to come, too well lit to sleep, but when I awake I feel less heavy, I feel more ready to leave the bed and function within the new confines. To read and create and tolerate the fielding of messages, phone calls. But that explosive brink, can it ever persist? If someone loves you, they want to say. They will pour their pain into your mind. Or they won't. Do I have the power to take it in without giving myself small deaths? 
who is victim and who is culprit, unpolluted by what? Boredom, irritation, the realness of flesh. I left a boiled egg on the stove. Maybe we are all stuck in moments in time. Let me help you relax. Delusion that is selflessness. So overflowing with selffulness. Feed me with story. Give me some of your rare spare hours. Why can't I tolerate containment? Only when it is what is given. To write, to give up, convey something. There is never anything to say. It will always be embarrassing. It will always be a broken heart. This is where we are beautiful. We must expand beyond what is the aching expansion of what we will never hold. Reach, graze its membrane, dare to say, accept distance and discomfort. You may not receive. That isn't why we are here. Try to create a single moment that will shatter concrete blocks of ambivalence. Suffer it. Allow others to suffer it. Mend, shatter, and try and live the waves of Voltaic. Borderless embrace. It's me again. I just, I just thought I'd send you off with a song. It's called Yellow Brick Road. On the yellow brick road ghetto The colors kind of faded with the time I am no scarecrow to you I am a lion though Now the station's grown empty The rails driven insane all leading to the south wall of the factory of tin can men But I'm waiting on the train I'm waiting on no train I tell you if we walk now We might get there by yourself 
Somehow beyond the storm I know it all came gradually Creeping in our hearts Where the seeds of disbelief But I'm resting in their shades When I know that the sun will shine For those who are not afraid And I'm waiting in the rain And I'm waiting in no rain The minute that we step outside The weather starts to change might even tame the storm Can we tame the storm? But I'm waiting for this change I'm waiting on no change We are the evening blowing the light into their caves Behind us comes the dawn Behind us comes the dawn Oh, behind us comes the dawn We might even be the storm See you next week.